Today what we're doing is we're talking about pharma- oh, what are we talking about? <laughs> what kind of witchcraft is Oh my god, there is a bug in here. I'm not even scared of bugs, it's just very surprising. Look at that, I have a bug in my house. Look at this. Thanks! That was really stupid. Hey guys, it's Amanda the CMA here again. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I talk about anything and everything medical assisting and beyond. For those of you who are returning viewers and hopefully subscribers, welcome back. Today what we're talking about is pharmacology acronyms. This has to deal with anything that you should really need to know if you are helping a physician prescribe a medication, different acronyms for medications, as well as just some general acronyms that have to deal with medication, medication use. So let's get into some pharmaceutical acronyms and we'll go from there. So stay tuned. Here we go. Okay guys, so here's my little disclaimer. It's the same as last time. So some of these that I have put on here are ones that you're technically not supposed to use and I did underline them in this one. But the reason that you weren't supposed to use these, this was the most prominent, is because these ones are dealing with prescriptions and directions. And the thing with directions is you want to make sure that you don't mess them up and sometimes with doctors really crappy handwriting it was very easy for anybody that they were trying to communicate to mess things up and sometimes that was fatal so they deemed them as not usable but now that we're using electronic charts and we're able to e-prescribe or print out medications with the directions on it you don't have to worry about the physician's crappy handwriting anymore so I do use all of these ones that I have listed on here just watch with your clinic what they use and what they don't use so if there's certain acronyms that they don't use then you probably want to confirm to that. So let's get started with some of these acronyms. So the first one that we've got is ABX. That's pretty self-explanatory. That means antibiotics. So you can use that when you are charting. Obviously we're not going to write a prescription for just ABX. So that is for antibiotics. The second one that we have is PCN and that means penicillin. Usually I use this when somebody's allergic to penicillin. I will put it as PCN which is penicillin. The next one that we have on here is NSAID. So that's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. So we're looking at ibuprofen, any ibuprofen products, anything that you would probably use for a headache, that is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug or NSAID. So the next one we've got is OCP. For those of you who have been following me for quite a while, you do know that I work in the OBGYN field, so this is one that I use a lot. So it stands for Oral Contraceptive Pill. The next one on the list is SSRI, and that means it's a Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. This is a long way of saying it is a depression medication. But not all depression medications are SSRIs. They're starting to branch out now. So that is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. The next one we have is ASA, and that is for aspirin. It is a very easy way to write it. I use it sometimes, but a lot of times I'll just write out aspirin. The next one that we have is very similar, and this one is APAP, and that stands for acetaminophen. Those are two different things. So this is one that you'll really want to watch out for. This is kind of why I don't use the two is because they're so similar. The next one we have is PO and as you see it has an underline so that means that you're not technically supposed to use it anymore. That means by mouth so if you're taking a tablet by mouth you would write one tab PO which means by mouth. QD is another one that they have deemed unusable, so I did underline that as well. It means every day. I do still use this one all the time. So just watch and see if your clinic uses it and then go ahead if they do. 
The next one is also one you're not supposed to use. I feel like we have a lot of these. It's QHS and that means every night. So it is just QHS. You can tell with the Q that means every for every single one of these ones. The next one is one of my favorites and it is PRN and that means as needed. So say you are using a lotion and we want you to use it as needed for dry skin, we would just write PRN instead. The next one is super long. So this is BID, TID, and QID. The first two are pretty easy to do. So you can think of it as a bicycle, so twice daily. Bicycles have two wheels. TID is a tricycle or three wheels means three times daily and QID, I just think of it as quad. So four times daily, that's how you would write those ones. Um, I'll give you a little time there. Next one is SIG. So this is just a way of saying directions for use. You will see this on every single prescription and when a pharmacist calls you, they will ask for a SIG if you forgot to give one, which does happen sometimes. So that is SIG. The next one we have, you've probably seen before, it's not exclusive to the medical field and that is QTY, which means quantity. So how many are you giving the patient? Are you giving them a 90 day supply? That would be quantity of 90 if they take it once a day. The next one up we have is TAB or TAB, which means tablet or CAP, CAP is capsule. Those are pretty self-explanatory. It's just a shorter way of saying it. We use it all the time. Then we've got NKDA, which means no known drug allergies. As you can tell, this is a very easy way to write that. We use it all the time in patients' charts, and it's, it's just the easiest way to write it. This next one gets very difficult. It is the DEA number. So every physician has a drug enforcement agency number, and that means that they have got the DEA number to write controlled substance prescriptions, and every provider does have one of these. So when they go to get their license, no matter if they're a nurse practitioner, a doctor, or maybe a physician assistant, they all need to have a DEA number in order to prescribe medications, and the pharmacy needs to have this information as well. So guys, it is now test time. If you remember from before, uh, I will just hold up what the acronym is and then you can go ahead and write it down on a piece of paper. If you have any questions or if you're confused if you got it right or not or you want to check your work, you can just roll back to the beginning of the video and go from there. So good luck guys, here we go.
right guys well I think that's everything for today that I can go over hopefully you guys learned a little bit hopefully you did good on the little mini quiz that I had at the end just so you guys know I do have a discount right now at Lady Karen badges it's all one word and it's on Etsy it's for ID badges which usually we need those so I did get one from her about a year ago and I absolutely love it and I figured if I'm going to do anything, if I'm going to reach out to anyone that is a supplier or has cute things, it might as well be something that I like a lot. So I did reach out to her and she was absolutely gung-ho about it. So I do have a discount code for you guys. I have all of the details down below. So take a peek at it. See if there's something cute on there that you like. There is stuff for guys too. And there is a discount code. So make sure you look down there. I am not affiliated with her. I just asked for a little bit of a discount on some of her ID badge holders that she has. So if you guys have any questions, like always, leave them in the comments box down below. Hopefully you enjoyed the video today and I will see you guys soon. Thanks.